Hollywood loves sequels, even if the audience doesn't always agree. Here's a handful of would-be franchise expanders that didn't come anywhere near duplicating the success of their predecessors. A Christmas Story 2, My Summer Story. Being a Hollywood producer has its risks, but at least you won't shoot your eye out if you make a sadly subpar and utterly unnecessary sequel to a beloved holiday classic. Oh my god, I shot my eye out! You'll shoot your eye out, kid. You'll shoot your eye out! Our proof lies in My Summer Story, the long-delayed follow-up to A Christmas Story. Originally titled It Runs in the Family, this 1994 release did have a couple ties to the original, like being based on stories by Gene Shepard, who returned to provide narration. But given that the entire cast of the original was too old to reprise their roles, a whole new set of stars had to be moved in, including Charles Grodin and Mary Steenburgen. Reviews weren't entirely unkind, but the film's box office gross, which totaled less than $71,000, speaks for itself. Legally Blondes After 2003's Legally Blonde 2, Red, White, and Blonde, Reese Witherspoon was just about done with the character of bimbo-turned-lobbyist Elle Woods. But after watching the franchise continue without her with the successful Legally Blonde stage musical, she took the reins once more as producer of this 2009 direct-to-DVD spinoff. The most interesting and sad thing about the movie is the involvement of director Savage Steve Holland, whose once-proud filmography kicked off with the John Cusack classic, Better Off Dead. Here, viewers watch as Elle's twin cousins move into her old house and... <sighs> you know what? It really isn't worth talking about the plot. Suffice it to say that small dogs and a life lesson in the final act are involved. Ace Ventura Jr. More than a decade after Jim Carrey exited the Ace Ventura franchise, someone got the bright idea to continue the series without him, by attempting to tell the story of his look-alike kid, who gets mixed up in solving some pet-related wrongdoings after Ace Sr. flies the coop. It's a horrible idea for a sequel, even one that went direct to video, and it was greeted with all the commercial indifference and critical scoring you might expect. If it arrived in the 90s, you probably would have seen it at your favorite blockbuster. Alas, by the late aughts, it could only gather dust on the loneliest DVD rack at your local Best Buy. War Games The Dead Code Unlike a lot of technologically driven films, War Games remains a pretty solid little action thriller. Not least because it boasts the combined talents of Matthew Broderick, Ali Sheedy, Dabney Coleman, and Barry Corbin. None of the above returned for the wholly lamentable War Games The Dead Code which tried to duplicate the teen hacker excitement of the original by essentially copying the plot, right down to the reintroduction of War Games senior computer whiz Stephen Falcon, played here by a new actor who didn't even appear in the original. Needless to say, these new War Games had no winners. Adam's Family Reunion Seeking to reboot the Adam's Family franchise after 1991's The Adam's Family and 1993's The Adam's Family Values, Fox decided to start it over again as a new TV show called The New Adam's Family featuring a new cast than who had appeared in the movies. And then the studio filmed the made-for-TV movie Adam's Family Reunion, which was supposed to serve as the series pilot, even though it had yet another cast of actors in the lead roles. Confused yet? Just be glad you weren't Tim Curry or Daryl Hannah, both of whom somehow ended up roped into this alternately unfunny and offensive alleged comedy. Unsurprisingly, neither the movie nor the show it launched had much of a legacy. The new Adams Family exited the airwaves after a two-season run, and there have been no family reunions since. Roadhouse 2 – Last Call There are definitely people in the world that would argue that Patrick Swayze's Roadhouse is a classic. It's hard to imagine, though, that many of them would go so far as to say we needed a sequel, let alone one starring Jonathan Sheck. If you remember him at all, it's probably from That Thing You Do. You know, the whiny guitar player who didn't live Tyler. Well, now you can add Roadhouse 2 to your list. Or don't. Probably don't. Sheck stars as Swayze's character's son, a DEA agent who ends up running his uncle's club after a local drug kingpin beats him half to death. If you're guessing that the kid ultimately discovers that the kingpin is the same bad guy who murdered his dad, then you're a step ahead of the target audience for Roadhouse 2 Last Call. Maybe go a step further and skip this one and just watch That Thing You Do Again. Tooth Fairy 2. You're setting a pretty low bar for comedy when you hire Dwayne The Rock Johnson to run around in fairy wings, but even when it's held up against the relaxed standard set by the original Tooth Fairy, its little scene sequel is an ordeal. The Rock obviously wasn't coming back for another round, so the producers hired Larry the Cable Guy on the assumption that, like The Rock, he'd provoke laughs simply by strapping on fairy wings. It didn't work, and neither did hiring a pig as one of Larry's co-stars. Splash 2. Splash 2 was Disney's attempt to cobble together a sequel to its hit mermaid rom-com starring Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. With neither star affordable enough for a TV movie, the studio almost completely overhauled the cast. 
Originally broadcast as a two-part event, Splash 2 has been all but forgotten. Even the reissue fanatics at Disney haven't gotten around to putting it out on DVD or Blu-ray. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. That's a mouthful. Cousin Eddie, the brain hick who drove Clark crazy in a pair of National Lampoon's Vacation movies, could be fairly funny in limited doses. Naturally, this was all the justification the studio needed for basing an entire vacation movie around Eddie after Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo were finished with the franchise. The horribly titled National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2 Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure <laughs> starts with Eddie losing his job to a monkey and goes downhill from there, with star Randy Quaid huffing and puffing his way through a series of increasingly lame pratfalls. Maybe the movie would have turned out better if they just replaced Quaid with a monkey altogether. Just kidding, we still love you, Randy. And last, and equally least, Bachelor Party 2 The Last Temptation. Studios cranked out a ton of sex comedies in the 80s, and 1984's Bachelor Party would have been just another one of them if its star, Tom Hanks, hadn't gone on to superstardom later in the decade. More than 20 years later, Fox tried making Lightning Strike twice with Bachelor Party 2 The Last Temptation. It was a sequel in name only that gathered up a group of stock character types to muck for the cameras in between gratuitous topless shots. Sadly for the studio, the next Hanks doesn't seem to have been in the cast, but that doesn't mean we won't hear about A Bachelor Party 3 in 2032. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which obscure movie sequels should have made the list.